Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and today is episode 1 of the My Team Career on the Formula 1 2020. But basically you create your own team as the 11th team on the grid and you create your own car, you create your own, well, your own driver as me and then you just race and you just see where you go in the season, you can do season after season, you can do loads of transfers, there's like sponsorship stuff, there's tons of really awesome things you can do within the season as well as just racing. So that's what we've been doing and I'm going to make a very long series out of this I hope. At least a few seasons, so if you're going to enjoy them, please do subscribe because we have more episodes coming out and leave a like and a comment. And also just comment down some like some feedback if you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it, and what you think I could do better or worse. And yeah, let's get straight into it and hope you want to enjoy. Welcome to my team. Here you'll experience the world of Formula One not only as a driver, but as the owner of a brand new F1 team. First things first, let's choose your character. We're just, we're just going to go over what I've already chosen, which is this guy. Uh, yeah. Now, let's set up some of the key details of your new team. We'll start with an easy one. What name would you like to give the team? Fox Racing. Nice. Now, some kind of income stream is critical. So we need to sign a primary sponsor. And a primary sponsor. Our primary sponsor will pay a signing bonus to the team up front. This is vital to cover the early investments we need to make. They will also provide valuable weekly income for us. Each sponsor has a goal that they want the team to achieve. If we hit that goal, the sponsor will pay us an additional goal bonus. So looking at the sponsors, a few we could go for. And I felt like it's between Shark. And try so. I'm gonna go with try so because they offer more of a goal, and I feel like the challenge is actually quite, kind of the same. I feel like the goal bonus makes up for a slightly less signing bonus, and their the actual like challenges are kind of similar. So five hundred points and two points finishes, and this one's gonna give us a bit more money. So we're gonna go with try so. Now we've got a budget to work with. Our car won't be going anywhere fast without a power unit. So let's sign a power unit supplier. We need both performance and durability from our power unit, but we also need to balance the books. We're going to have a lot of other areas to invest our cash into. So we can either go with the worst engine, which is Honda, or the best engine, which is Ferrari. Now I don't want to go with the best engine, that's a lot of money. Is the worst engine going to give us enough power, is the question. So I might go with Renault over Honda. Four hundred K for three more durability and one more performance. Is it is that enough? We're gonna go with Renault. We almost have all the key partners for our team now, but we still need a teammate for you. Alright, we're gonna need to pick a teammate. Drivers available to be your first teammate. They all have their own strengths and weaknesses, so consider everything when deciding who to hire. Drivers earn a claim based on their performances. When a driver earns enough acclaim, they will level up. The higher a driver's level, the more acclaim they will earn for their current team. And remember, the faster the team levels up, the faster our income will increase. The higher a driver's experience, the more resource points are earned to spend on vehicle upgrades. Racecraft is the driver's skill to effectively complete overtakes when opportunities arise. Awareness shows the driver's ability to avoid errors and incidents. Pace describes the driver's ability to set competitive lap times. Rating is a summary of the driver's overall skill level. Alright, so Mazepin was the one who spun out a bar eight, so I'm not going to pick him. Is there... Oh, I wanted to pick Yuki Tsunoda, but he's not on it. So we could spend a little bit more. So we could spend 0.5 more and get a better driver, which I feel like might be quite useful to try and get those points finishes. Or we could go with someone like Boccolacci or Korea. I feel like I think we're gonna go with fellow Brit Callum Illot. He's either a bit more expensive and a rating less than King and Hubert. But his stats I feel like are better. I think he said like the X X the EXP makes you more money or something. And it's a lot higher than King and Hubert, which is what we need. His race cost is a bit lower, his awareness is higher, and his pace is a bit lower. But I don't feel like that's, that's a 64. And these, I don't think they're going to do enough for us over the course of the season with their rating. So we're going to go with Callum Illot, I think. Looks like we can afford this power unit supplier and teammate. Go ahead and confirm if you're happy. 
All right, let's create a car. Oh, I've already got this one from what I use. And to be fair, I'm actually quite happy with it, so I don't think I'm going to change it that much. Oh. Select an existing badge, edit it, or create one from scratch. Team badge. I'm going to stick with this, which is what I already have. Last but not least, we need to pick team colors for the rest of our branding. You'll see these colors throughout HQ. So we're going to go for an orange, a black, and a light blue, which is what I kind of go with. Great. That's everything we need. You can go back and edit anything we've done so far, and we'll come back here at the start of each season. But if you're ready to go, hit advance to head to Team HQ, and we can start our push to the top of Formula One. Let's go. All right, then. Here we go into the team headquarters, which I'm going to say now is going to be based in the UK because I'm based in the UK. We are a UK team with two UK drivers. Brexit is... No, 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 Brexit, no Brexit. But we are going to win the F1. All right, we've got some interviews or something. So whichever answers we pick... It's going to influence our car for the first race, I think. Like, what's already set there? All right, so we need, we need to pick good answers. It's going to influence, like, what happens to our car at the start of the season, I think. Yeah, I'm ready. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm good. Live in five, four, three. Stage to gain an exclusive insight into what could be one of the most exciting entries in the sport for many years. Now we've seen a number of new teams enter the sport over the last decade, amongst their number Manor, Caterham, HRT and of course Haas. And while some have proved to be successful, others have morphed into different teams and some have disappeared completely. What marks this team out though as being something different is that its owner is also its driver. There's a rich That's history me. of that in Formula 1 too, Sir Jack Brabham, John Surtees, Graham Hill and Bruce McLaren all drove their own cars in the sport, but it has become increasingly rare in recent years. What's very special about this team, though, is that, that while the team itself is new to Formula One, so too is its driver and owner. Whatever happens this season, you've already made the history book. Tell me, do you feel up to the mammoth task of both managing and driving for a Formula One team? We're going to go with... This, because I feel like it's going to big up our team a bit. Every team needs two drivers, but what was it that drew you to your teammates? So we, we want to big up our teammate here, so... We're going to say that they have a lot of potential. So we're going to be near the bottom. So uh, this is going like, uh, to be our rivals, maybe. I feel like Alphatari a bit too good. Williams maybe a bit too bad. It's going to be Haas Alpha. We're going to have Alpha Romeo, I think. I feel like that's where we could be going for. I think Haas are again not that good. We're going to have Alpha Romeo. How are you expecting the car to feel out on track? So we're going to try and big up our corner team. And then maybe next one we'll do the engine. I think this is the aero. Or is it chassis? A bit of the three. We're just going to like big everyone up in terms. We're going to start off with the corner one. Aero. You see the aero department will notice that. The other teams now have years of experience. Both on and off the track. How are you planning to catch up to them? So now we're going to try and big up like either the engine or the chassis. So. And do this one. Yes, the power, the the engine power. Is a key part of this sport. How have you ensured that your car can take advantage of each opportunity that comes your way? I want to go for chassis now. Ch chassis. Which is light, I'm pretty sure. There we go. The chassis department will notice that. 
most proud of. So here we can choose one of the departments to really big up. So we can do either do aero, chassis, power, or durability. We don't want to do durability, I don't think we need that that much. I think we are gonna go with power, I think that's quite useful. Okay, great, thank you. Great interview, boss. You nailed exactly what the team's been working on. When you've got time, check the R and D tree to see our current progress and where we think there's room for more. And while you're at it, why not take a stroll around HQ and check on how the team's doing? Alright, so here's our car. And we've got activities. Time between races to the fullest extent, and that's where these activities come in. Manage everyone's time as efficiently as possible to maximize the team's performance. So the acclaim thing is going to be really, really useful for us. That's like what's going to boost our team. So now here. We can pick one of we can pick one of these in these positions. Now I don't want to go for this one because it's going to actually lose things for the aero and chassis. We don't want to do at all. So we want to choose one that's going to help us. Five hundred k cash is going to be very helpful. Boost the claim, but lose some cash. We don't want to do these two because they're going to lose things in the apartment. So we're going to make some cash. Oh, this is an awkward position. We can't actually fit this in. How long have we got here? We can throw in a driver training camp for our second driver. To get him a bit better. This is where you can view our current facilities and the effects they're having on the business. You can also invest some of our cash into upgrades for these facilities. That's something we want to improve. We get them for each department, I think. So, later on in the season, you can see we've already got some upgrades in the engine, and I think... That's because of what we said in that interview, we were like kind of being up the, the engine a bit more. So I think that's why we've got all those uh, things already checked off. And the research and development is going to be very, very important. That's where we're going to upgrade our car the most. It's through here. You can see we've already got a few things in each department. Because of, well, I think what we said in the interview, I think. But these are going to be the most important. We've got 1,000. We could, do, we could already do a few things. We're going to do a, we're going to do a minor front downforce upgrade. It's not going to come in time for the next Grand Prix, though, but we're just going to do it anyway. Why not? And you can see where we are on the map. We're actually not too bad. We're coming up on Alpha Tari. We're already ahead of Haas, Alfa Romeo, and Williams. So I feel like what we did was good in those... Uh, preseason stuff. There we go. Looking lovely now, our car with the TriStar logo. All right, let's just advance the time to our car reveal, I guess. Here we go. Then go to the car reveal to show our car. You've already seen it, uh, but uh, over the next few seasons, next season or two, we'll make something really cool. But the minute I haven't unlocked much, so this is all we can really do. We haven't unlocked that much. But it is still a very nice car if I said to myself. Quite similar to McLaren's in the orange and black. But it's just a female I want to go because I like orange, obviously. So I, I like it, honestly. I quite like it. Very nice looking car. Make one more upgrade. I'm going to go to the power side of things and do this minor engine power upgrade on the ignition system. Now, it might just be straight into the first race of the season, I reckon. The Australian Grand Prix. It is. We're going to see what happens in the Australian Grand Prix. And from there, from what happens in this race, that's where, you, that's where we can base the rest of our upgrades this season off is what happens in this Grand Prix. It's a big Grand Prix. It's a big one. Morning, boss. Jeff here. Thanks again for bringing me on board. You've found a lot of talented people for this team. No problem, Jeff. Can't wait to see what we can accomplish. Our journey to the Constructors' Championship starts here today. It does you too, Jeff. To head out whenever you are. All right, Jeff, man. In the unforgiving world of Formula One, free practice sessions are a vital part of any Grand Prix weekend. 
During your F1 career, you'll be able to utilize these sessions to complete practice programs which will help you learn the track and earn new points that can be invested in developing your car. You'll also be able to adjust your car setup over the course of these sessions to try and find those extra fractions of a second. The sporting regulations dictate that after each free practice session you'll have to hand back two sets of your dry tyre allocation for the weekend. So get the most out of them while you can. We're just going to go out and we just, we're just going to uh, we're just going to do a few laps just to see how the car actually feels. We're going to do a few laps just to see how the car actually feels because I haven't driven it yet. It's going to be the first time we ever drive our own car in this Formula 1 though. It's the first time we're ever going to drive our own car. And here we go then. And that is really loud, so I'm actually going to just turn down the volume. It's breaking my ears. And it doesn't feel that bad. It doesn't feel that slow, and it doesn't feel that bad through the corners. Well, actually, never mind. It feels awful through the corners. But, uh... It's very difficult to get those sharp corners in. But obviously, we're going we're gonna to have to expect that in a car like this. A new car. So definitely some work on the aero is definitely needed through these corners. Definitely some aero work, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. The pa the pace doesn't seem too bad, and it doesn't feel like too like slow or sluggish. It's just very difficult to get through some of these corners, but I don't mind the car actually. I, it feels not too bad, so that's a plus. I'm just gonna skip time and go to the qualifying. Our ERS is draining so fast because we haven't done any improvements in that area. The thing we're going to have to look at is this DRS improvement because that was very, very slow. But the car really doesn't feel as bad as I thought it would feel. It really doesn't feel that bad, so that is definitely a huge plus. And we crossed the line with a lap of 135, which in a minute is the fastest lap. I don't think it will stay that way because I don't think a lot of people have actually done their lap yet, but. It's a very good sign that that actually wasn't that bad of a lap, so this car is going to perform better than I thought it would do, which is a very good thing. And would you look at that, we massively improve on our lap time by almost 3 seconds. So, that is a good thing. We're obviously a few seconds behind Bottas, but it's a big positive to see how well we're actually doing this practice. Way better than I thought we would do. So that is a very good thing. Now onto the qualifying. So we do actually have enough uh, R&D to get another upgrade. We're going to go... We've already done the aerodynamics and the power trains. We're going to go over this chassis. We're going to do this minor rear floor under trade distribution. So let's get that developed. Should come in for the Chinese Grand Prix as long as it doesn't fail. So let's start that now. And let's get on with the qualifying. Ho hopefully we can set a good lap. We're going to go straight out onto a flying lap. And just see if we can get somewhere between... Well, obviously getting into Q2 would be the dream, but I don't know if we are going to get into Q2, so... As long as we're not last, or second to last, I'm not, as long as we're not in the last row, I'll be happy. But obviously the dream is to get into Q2, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but it is a dream. And you know what, I'm pretty happy with this lap, I don't think I could have gone much faster. The corners are all pretty good. So hopefully this is in a bad position, because I don't think I could have gone much faster. We're up into P4 now, just behind our teammate Illa, which is a little bit annoying. But I personally don't think we could have gone much faster, so... Hopefully that holds out. And we end up with, uh... Well, Q2 would be the dream, I don't think we're going to get Q2. But I don't feel like I personally could have gone much faster than we did. So, hopefully it's enough to see us a good qualifying time. We are going to go again, but if we don't get into the green before the last few corners, we are going to go into the pit. So that was a lot faster through there. So maybe there is room for a bit of improvement. Hopefully we can uh, make that show and get a good lap time. And get a good qualifying time. And going into the final few corners of this lap, we've actually gained a lot of time. We must have lost a bit of it there. No, we didn't. We've gained a lot of time. That was a poor corner, but we still gained a lot of time. See if I get us above here, Lutz. Hopefully it does. It does, we have overtaken our teammate, which was very important for me actually. So uh, hopefully this gets enough to be a good qualifying time, I hope. We're ahead of Russell, which could be a bit of a rival in this series. So we're ahead of him and there's a yellow flag for some reason, I'm not sure what's happened. Do make it 
into Q2 in our first ever Grand Prix. We make it into Q2, which I'm very happy with. We beat our teammate who doesn't make it into Q2. So, very happy with that. Let's make it count. Alright then, as we come out into the flying lap of Q2, I don't actually mind where we come. I feel like the achievement was getting into Q2 and anywhere we come in this qualifying is already very good because if you told me we were going to qualify... Oh, that was an awful one, I'm sorry. If you told me we were, if you told me we were going to qualify in top 60, I would have thought that was so good and it is so good. So actually, I don't really mind where we qualify here because anywhere we qualify is very good for us. In our first ever race getting top 16 into Q2, that's actually just incredible. So I don't mind where we qualify, so generally I'm just going to put an okay lap round. If we come 16, if we come 16, I'm not going to like try and make an amazing lap. Because anywhere we come, I don't expect to. We'll probably just get 16th anyway, so... I'm just going to try our best, wherever we come, wherever we come, I guess. We're going to come through the line and currently be at a position 4, but I think there's only been about 4 cars that have been, so... I do not expect to stay there, but we will see. I'm just happy to be in Q2, so I'm just very happy to be in Q2. Let's have a look. We are. We get 15th on our first ever race. I'm very happy with that. I'm very, very happy with that. So, in a minute, we've got Bottas, Hamilton, Verstappen, Vettel, Norris and P5. We've got the Renaults. One of them is in P10, just sneaking through, and the other one is going out on 13th, but... It will probably change going into uh, Q Q3, obviously the top 10. Months of rumour and speculation all come to an end today as we return to Melbourne for the opening race of what promises to be an enthralling season. Welcome along then to the Australian Grand Prix. The Melbourne circuit is certainly one that needs to be taken seriously. Its combination of slippery surfaces and difficult corners make it a tricky track when it comes to overtakes. Drivers find it hard to pass and will need to take full advantage of those DRS zones if they want to have any hope of breaking through. Can Mercedes start with victory in their bid to win a seventh consecutive constructors title? Could Ferrari or Red Bull establish an advantage early on? And with 22 cars on the grid, how quickly can the new team find their footing? Well, it's great to be back, Anthony Davidson. We've got a lot to talk about this year. That's right, Crofty. It felt like a long winter, but it's good to finally be back. I have to think the usual suspects will battle it out at the front, but there are always going to be some teething problems early on in the season, so whoever can keep on top of their issues will have the advantage today. As I mentioned earlier, we're up to 11 teams this season, with a new entry run by, well of all things, an owner-driver. That's something we haven't seen in this sport since Hector are back over four decades ago. So how are they looking so far? It's hard to imagine how a small operation like that could survive in the ruthless world of Formula One. And yet here they are, first ever race looking surprisingly strong. But there are no points for qualifying. Let's see how they fare in the Grand Prix proper. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The fin starts from pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Sainz, Lando Norris and Vettel, Albon, Leclerc, Ricardo, and Sergio Perez. Stroll, Gasly, Esteban Ocon and Kvyat, Morris, Magnussen, Roman Grosjean and Callum Eilert, Raikkonen, Russell, Latifi and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. So a few things, I don't know if you noticed there in that actual like uh, cutscene, but he said my name is Morris. And that's because there's no moss for the content of voice and I thought Morris kind of sounds similar. You know, if you say it quickly, it's like Morris, Morris, Moss. You know what I mean? It's kind of similar, so um, we've gone with it. And race strategy is going to be very, very big in this race. And I feel like the one stop might work out for us, because I feel like a lot of the top cards are going to go for maybe a two stop. We're going to go for a one stop. And the fuel, we're going to just drop it down a little bit to 30.5, I reckon. So uh, that's going to be our thing for today. That set up. Let's just have a good race, enjoy it. First race of the season. Let's hope to not get DNF'd. Let's just have a fun race, enjoy it, and hopefully we can do. Hopefully we can do well.
and it's lights out and away we go here in the Australian GP first one of the season overtake mode on we're going to try and go around the outside but we haven't got the pace in a straight line oh, okay almost went into the back of Ocon there go a bit wide but we have held P15 going to start this race which is very important Ahead of us is Kvyat and Gasly in the Alfa Tauri's and around us Magnussen has the pure pace going to go for a dive on the inside. I think we actually get Kvyat with that as well, a beautiful dive. But Kvyat doesn't let him get back at us around the corner, we go around the outside, very around the outside to give him the room, but we do see that overtake off and a very good overtake, see it's up into 14. But Kvyat looks to come back down the outside as the ARS used, breaking into the corner. And let's just hold up this race. Thank you, uh, thank you. If we get some around the outside, we're going to have to take the inside. We do manage to get back around the inside. No collisions on the corner. Now, a lot of this race is going to be trying to hold out where we are. Because a P14 finish would be absolutely perfect on our first ever race. I would love that. So we're just going to try and hold out our position for a lot of this race. Not drop too many positions. And I don't expect to be anywhere near the top 10. So if we just hold out where we are, it would be absolutely perfect for a first race. So... Let's just see how it goes, really, and enjoy it. Valtteri Bottas leads the grid, because he's got the fastest lap. We're down in P14. And obviously, there probably will be a few DNFs in the early season. We almost went into the back of Gazi there, very close. We're going to look to try and get him back here, but he just has more pace than us in his car, and there's not much we can do about that. Maybe just hope our strategy is a bit better than his. But yeah, there's really not much we can do at the minute. And now we get everything by Magnussen again. Not ideal at all. So some upgrades are definitely needed on the car. It may be in terms of pace. Our corners haven't been that bad. It's the pace where we're lacking out. So I didn't mean to have ERS on there, which is a bit annoying. I actually turned it on. So we need to upgrade our pace, definitely. Maybe our chassis a bit as well. But... It's not been a terrible first race, we had a good qualifying, there's definitely some good signs in this race. Maybe we can let's try and get back past Magnussen and get back into the 15. We do have DRS on Magnussen here using overtake mode as well, trying to get back past him with the DRS and the overtake. We just don't quite have enough straight to do it, we're about to get it there. Magnussen just seems to have a natural pace down the straight, even if we have DRS and DRS. Just seems to be holding us off with the pace in that Hascar. If a bit of a dive bomb here on Magnussen, doesn't pay off, we get a bit of contact on the, on the wheel and it's actually just floored us and now here comes Raikkonen. Go for a bit of a switchback manoeuvre around this corner and we managed, no we don't get the job done. And now we're going to try and get him with DRS and ERS. And now here comes Grosjean, it's been a real turn for the worst here. We're going to get back cross Grosjean, we're out of ERS now. But battling with Magnus and Raikkonen just sees the opportunity and takes it. Which is very, very frustrating for me. I'm going to try and dive. Can we get him? No, we don't have any. We do have DRS on him though. You know we don't have DRS. We have the DRS and we've already taken him. So we're going to be back past Raikkonen with this DRS. But we're going to be almost... Thank you, thank you. One seconds. And when we almost, we, oh, we actually managed to get DRS on Magnussen somehow, I don't know how he managed that. But we have got it, as we fly down the straight line looking to catch back up to Magnussen, and only we nearly had Magnussen. In the end we actually just lost two positions to Grosjean and Raikkonen, we managed to get Grosjean back and then Raikkonen back. But only we lost a lot of time doing that. So this is a few laps later and we've managed to pull away from Grosjean and Raikkonen and catch right back up to Magnussen, which is what we've been trying to do for the last three laps. I think it's been four or five laps now. We've been trying to just catch up to Magnussen. Trying to keep keeping that DRS range. We just dropped out of it. And at the start of the race, I was completely forgetting to change the fuel. So I've been doing that now. Here into Rich and Lean. But no, we're just trying to keep up with Magnussen. We're trying to get in a DRS uh, time of one second. And we are just dropped out of it. I think coming to the DRS zone, which is very frustrating. Maybe some DRS needs to be used. And I completely forgot about that. Trying to talk to you, but if we pulled away from Grosjean and Raikkonen, we just dropped, trying to keep up with Magnus and we now just dropped off in this lap, but we had caught up really well. So it's going to be a long old race this, but you can take some people in the pits, mainly just Leclerc actually, it's just Leclerc, and our teammate is going to the pits now. So I'm a bit confused what's happened to Leclerc unless he's just making a really early pit stop, but we have got ahead of the Ferrari, maybe we can try and just hold him off a bit, I don't know. 
And as you can see, there's a lot of people in the pit. We're going to go hard on the power. Trying to get as many people as we can in this pit. Just trying to overtake them. And we will get a lot of people coming out of this pit. We will not get these people over here. I don't think. Hamilton will stay ahead of us. Oh, they've a in a maximum of a collision. And then we've collided with Hamilton. Absolute chaos. Verstappen collides with Magnussen out the pit lane. Verstappen says that we just slightly at the back of Hamilton. Luckily, no damage, I think, even me or Hamilton. But that was some chaos. And I think it was caused by Magnussen. I don't think Verstappen did much wrong coming out the pits, but that's exactly what we were hoping for this way. It's a bit of drama at the table to maybe put us in position. So we're currently in P10. We're never going to hold it because we do have to pit. But at the minute, we are in a points position. We're never going to hold it, but quite impressive. And some massive drama for Verstappen, he is not going to be happy. He's not how he kicked off that Force India car that time. He is not going to be happy at all. But um, some real drama in the first race of the Grand Prix. And I feel terrible for Max Verstappen. Hamilton's pulled away from us, as you knew he would. And we're going to make our pit stop this lap, so a lot of these positions we're probably going to lose. But I was expecting that to happen, and now we've just got a bit wide in that corner. Maybe letting Raikkonen catch up just a bit before we go into the pits. We're not going to come back ahead of him, but he will probably pick this lap as well and if it doesn't it'll be the lap after so not terrible a good first stint on these tires we're gonna go for the one to obviously onto the hard tires now it's been a good first stint on these tires and you can see uh, Magnuson also pitting as well but that is incredible I don't know where Verstappen is now but he will be absolutely fuming Latifi is on medium tires so me Magnuson is definitely gonna look to catch him up maybe when he goes for his pit stop well, let's just see what happens for the rest of this race now, because I generally don't know. It's been a very interesting race. So Giovinazzi, yeah, you can see going into the pits, as well as a few others. Oh, actually, I don't think there was a few others. Just, just Giovinazzi, we are up at 17th. So as soon as Latifi pits, we are back where we were before. And we've got yellow flags. I wonder what on earth has happened. For yellow flags, back onto green flags, so the yellow flags are up above. It's Ocon, it's Ocon has had an engine failure, I think. I think Ocon has had an engine failure, which is he has out of the session, so terrible. But I knew something like this was going to happen, which is why I, 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 just, I just had a feeling there's going to be some sort of drama. There has been. And hopefully we can catch uh, a few more positions up and do that... Uh, that, that out of the session, DNF by Ocon. We might be heading a bit further up the table than we may have originally thought. There we go, Latifi does finally go into the pits and we are back into the 15th we were before our pit stop. Some information on Gasly, they seem to have an issue. So Pierre Gasly, just I've just been told Pierre Gasly has an issue, which is interesting. He's a few positions ahead of us, but if this is a, this is a poor issue, so if this is a bad issue, we won't be able to overtake Gasly if he slows up enough. So we could have another free position here. We'll be set for actually a really good first race just because of all these DNFs that have happened. Kimi Raikkonen is out of session as a safety car. What? And keep a positive delta. What's happened? What what has happened to Kimi Raikkonen? It's a disaster for him. He, it's not an engine failure because the safety car's out. I don't think they come out for engine failures. He must have crashed. I don't think I had anything to do with it, he was, he was a, one or two positions behind me, but I don't think I had, any, I, I don't think I had, any, uh, I don't think I had any, anything to do with it, I think he was too far behind me. Wait, the safety car's ending. Oh, so the safety car's gone. So it really... I'm all confused. So, he must have like spun out, not climbing on, just spun into a wall. The safety car's come out, it wasn't as bad as they thought, and they put the safety car back in. So with some drama here again, we, we, Raikkonen's out the session, we were ahead of him anyway, so it doesn't really make much difference for us. But, oh, you joined us at lap 23, I think last time I came was like lap 11 and really nothing has changed, we're still behind Mags and ahead of Grosjean. It's just, we've just been stuck between these two cars, I think that's kind of where we are. It's kind of with the two, uh, the two has cars. Because we've just been stuck between the two of them this whole race, there's not much we can really do. Alright then, on to the last lap of the race, and as you can see, again, nothing has changed, we're still behind Magnussen and ahead of Grosjean, it's been kind of a boring end to this race, the last, say, 15 laps, I haven't made a single overtake, apart from people that went in the pits, it's just, we haven't quite got the pace in the straight to overtake Magnussen, 
he just gets ahead of us. We haven't been able to catch up to DRS for ages. And there we go, Valtteri Bottas is your race winner here. That was an awful corner because I was mainly looking at our fuel. And we got it to burn on this last time. So we're going to go into Richmond for the whole rest of the race. And ERS, we've actually saved up a lot in the last few laps. Maybe the last, uh, to maybe mount a last lap overtake for Magnum. I don't think we're going to do it. It's going to burn through the ERS now. But I don't think it'll be enough with this rich mix to actually get past Magnum. Which is a massive shame. We do finish in P15, which is a massive achievement for our first race. I wasn't expecting it to be this high. So I'm really, really proud of how far we've already come in this first race and how high we finished up. So super proud of the team. It was a good race, even if it's a boring one. I haven't made really many mistakes, many mistakes. I really haven't made any. So, uh, yeah, good first race. Maybe it's the sign of things that's coming. We upgraded the car. We'll be heading up there into the points position. Maybe, I don't know. That was a bit wide in that corner, but luckily it wasn't too far. I'm going to come in with a perfect amount of fuel. 0 0.1 laps, although I did use quite, uh, did save quite a lot of it. And we come through in a P15. I will take that on my first ever race. P15, it was a good race as well. So I massively, I massively take that. So yeah, great first race. We've witnessed some great battles on the streets of Melbourne today, and they've taken a fantastic win. So Anthony, what made the difference out there today? I think that smart tyre management on track and very smooth driving definitely assisted in their victory today. That combination meant they got the absolute maximum out of their tyres at all times. And I can see the drivers starting to approach the podium for the victory celebrations. A real team victory today. Everybody played their part. Congratulations then to Mercedes, your race winners today. And would you look at that, Lando Norris makes the podium. Yes, Lando, a British icon, quite frankly, and he makes the podium incredibly. A brilliant race for Lando, only his second ever podium, so really done. Bottas takes the lead, as you would have seen, and Hamilton comes second with the fastest lap. So very good for Mercedes. McLaren takes third and fifth, so good for them as well. Albon takes fourth, and Verstappen takes seventh, so you covered really really well from his um from his crash with i think magnuson verstappen covered really really well so props to verstappen for doing so well Lance Stroll takes sixth from the racing book which is another good position and the ferrari slumped to 11th and 8th with renault and rating book taking the last few points as well as vettel so pretty incredible there you can see we finished a comfortable 15th but our teammate made it up to 19th so for a minute i was worried that they had in fact finished last they hadn't they had overtaken latifi Although they made two stops, and I'm not sure why, so maybe Illet just had like a, a bad incident and he had to stop again. Maybe he would have been ahead of people like Russell and Giovinazzi if he didn't have to make that second stop. Although him and Illet did, get, sorry, him and Latifi did get lapped. Obviously, Ocon and Raikkonen had their DNF. So we finished in 15th, which is a very good. If Ocon hadn't have DNF, we would have been uh, 16th, but we were ahead of Raikkonen anyway. So a very good first race. I will take that. A good first race, look at the constructors, uh, constructors, obviously it's just the points are normal same, but Mercedes are comfortably top by, by with McLaren, Red Bull, Racing Point, Ferrari, and Renault getting the points. We haven't got any points, uh, because not many teams have. And if you go into the race director, we can have a look at the instance, what happened. So Raikkonen got a 5 second time penalty for illegal blocking. But then got DNF for a mechanical failure. Ocon also got a mechanical failure. And here is Verstappen that was actually given the collision with Magnussen. So Verstappen got the warning. And Ocon had a... But, um... Yeah, so what an interesting first race. And went well for us. So I'm pretty happy with the result there. 15th place. I'll take it. I'll take it. We got 15th on the grid. We got 15th in the race. And I'll definitely take it because it was a very good race for us. And I'm very proud of the team and what it's done. We've got 10k in damages apparently, but I don't remember hitting it. We hit Hamilton that one time, but that was, that was it. A little bit of money in the bank, we can do some upgrades maybe on the old HQ. And we've got some R&D we can do with that as well. But that will be at the start of next episode, so thank you all for coming and watching this video. First episode, well first race, and it went, it went very well. 
So I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you on the next one.